All right, persimmon lovers, this is Ross. Today we're looking at my Rosianca persimmon tree. This tree's been in the ground for eight seasons. I've had this tree planted here in the Philadelphia area for quite some time. So I planted this in 2016, and it is just absolutely loaded with fruit. There's got to be at least 500 persimmons on this Rosianca persimmon tree. To me, this is incredible. And I think it's a valuable lesson to anybody out there who wants to have a productive persimmon tree. Yeah, I wanna show off a little bit because this tree had given me, has given me trouble for many years. I mean, we actually had very little fruit for about five years of this tree's life. And it really was only until I did something called summer pruning where I was able to actually trick the tree into fruiting. Yeah, I mean, it basically does trick them into fruiting. It changes the hormones in these trees to favor fruiting and not favor growth. Now, the other crazy thing that's going on this year, not only are there just persimmons everywhere, but some of these are ripening now. It's only September 11th. I don't understand how this is happening, but it is. I mean, the, guys, I, I, you know, if anyone has the answer to that one, please, I'll be glad to listen. But you're gonna tell me that the weather was so good this year that it's ripening this Rosianca persimmon three months earlier than it normally does? I know you get some persimmons here and there. I mean, they love to trickle in. But this persimmon historically has ripened the majority of its fruit around Christmas time. But most of the persimmons now on this tree, I would say maybe 40% of the persimmons now are turning color. I ate my first really, really good one the other day. And now I just picked three of them here in my pocket. And that branch that I showed you guys has a lot of orange fruit on it. Now, what can happen here is you get some damage on some of the fruits. And anytime there's damage like this, this is called slashing. And essentially what that means is the fruits are damaged and it'll ripen sooner. So this is a technique uh, that's used in other fruits, not just persimmons. Uh, it, it can occur, the same process can occur in other fruits. I see it in my apples all the time because they're usually damaged by bugs. But these are totally fine. There's nothing wrong with these. So how is it, again, that they're ripening three months earlier? I don't have the answer. I wish I did. But I can tell you why this thing's so productive. Now, first of all, you want to get an, and if you get an American persimmon, the fruits are smaller than an Asian persimmon. This is a hybrid of the two. Uh, but it definitely shows about 90% of the characteristics you'll see in an American. Uh, so the fruits are smaller, but you know, so they're gonna be more productive, no doubt. But I don't have, um, you know, many uh, Asian persimmons other than maybe Miss Kim that show this weeping habit like this because they're just so laden with fruit. Uh, so this can naturally happen, no doubt, over time. You can get a tree like this. Maybe there's nothing special about just the sheer amount of fruit on it. But getting there can be really tricky for certain people. And I could have saved myself probably four years, I estimate, getting to this level of productivity for the age and size of the tree. I spent probably five years of this tree's life getting almost nothing. And the reason for that is because of excessive winter pruning, an imbalance of hormones in the tree. So this can really be solved, as I mentioned, I was getting to that, is summer pruning. Now, if you want to see the actual technique, I don't do summer pruning anymore on this tree. I haven't done it in a couple of years. I don't know the exact date that we did it, but I'll put a link to that video in the description. You can see exactly what we did, what the technique is exactly, and how it affects the tree. And then I show you guys the results in a video, I think, later that season. But again, this is just a continuation of that technique. I did it once for the most part, we summer pruned actually, I think two or three times that year. What had happened was the tree then branches out, puts out a lot of growth. The tree became very full 
rather than more of a sparse, long, lanky tree. If you look at this mulberry tree here, that's right next to it, this is what the tree kind of looked like. See all the, you could kind of see in between the tree because it just has these long, lanky shoots to it. Now I've summer pruned this and you can see I'm actually getting a crop of uh, mulberries up here and we've got some branching up here, but this tree has been rather difficult to get this to fruit because it's not in the right hormonal balance. The same thing happened with this Rosianca for years. And the minute I summer pruned it, the next year it put out a ton of persimmons to the point where last year I had about 300. This year we've got probably close to 500, maybe more. I don't even, it's hard to estimate at this point. And again, the, the whole tree has to be supported with stakes because of how heavily laden with fruit this tree actually is. See that post that I put in there on that scaffold? We lost a whole scaffold last year because of the sheer weight of the fruits on that one scaffold that, by the way, was about 40% of the canopy. See that down there? And I thought, okay, well, a tree's really not gonna like that. It's not gonna fruit very heavily next year. We lost 40% of the canopy. Look at it now. You know, I don't, there's some mysteries with this, with these persimmons, but what's clear to me is if you have a fast growing persimmon, and especially if it's not producing any fruit, it's dropping its persimmons, you need to summer prune it. That's today's lesson. Please hit the subscribe button. Check out the other video I mentioned. We'll see you for the next one. And I can't wait to taste these guys with you. And uh, we'll share some info on that. So hit the subscribe button and we'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.